No matter how you spell it, whiskey is one of the world's favourite spirits. More than a billion bottles are sold every year. And here in the States, one whiskey outsells all the others. Yet it's still made the old-fashioned way, with the same simple ingredients they've always used. So when it comes to making America's best-selling spirit, how do they do it? This is Lynchburg, Moore County, Tennessee. It's a quiet, law-abiding little place where the sale of alcohol is banned. For almost 100 years since the days of Prohibition, Moore County has been a dry county. But just because you can't buy alcohol here doesn't mean you can't make it. Which is lucky because Lynchburg is the site of the world-famous Jack Daniels Distillery. So why did old Jack build his distillery here in what locals call the Hollow? The answer is behind his statue. This spring produces 3,000 litres a minute of clean, fresh water. And because this water has been filtered through limestone, it's also iron-free. And that's important, because even a tiny trace of iron would give the whiskey a nasty metallic taste. But when it comes to making whiskey, fresh spring water is just the start. To make alcohol, you also need grain. The combination of different types of grain will influence the flavour of the finished whiskey. As master distiller Jeff Arnett explains, we're 80% corn. The corn will make Jack Daniels a sweet whiskey. We'll do about 12% malted barley. It will give us a light cereal character. The last grain that we use is rye, and rye is a very bold, peppery, spicy grain, so this will provide a little bit of a zest. The ground corn, malted barley, and rye is mixed with water from the cave spring and warmed through. In a few hours, enzymes from the malted barley break down the grain starch, turning it into sugar. But this sweet solution won't turn into alcohol on its own. They need to add a tiny microorganism. Yeast. Inside these 150,000 litre fermenters, they mix the sweet liquid with some of the yeast left over from the last fermentation and let nature take its course. Soon the yeast is guzzling the sugar and excreting alcohol and carbon dioxide gas. The feeding frenzy creates a bubbling cauldron of fermenting mash. This is barely above room temperature right now. It looks like it's boiling. Um, but what you're seeing is all the CO2 being expressed as the yeast are taking the sugars from the grains. We're working from the yeast that we've had since Prohibition, so since the late 1930s. Keeping the yeast from one fermentation to start the next helps ensure they're always using the same strain. The problem is, over time, the yeast could change and evolve, and that could alter the taste. To make sure that doesn't happen, Jeff has samples of his special yeast cryogenically frozen at minus 125 degrees Celsius. The samples are stored off-site in secret locations. We can always go back to a frozen preserve culture that keeps Jack Daniels, Jack Daniels this year and hopefully 100 years from now it'll be exactly the same. After six days, most of the sugar has been turned to alcohol. The mash isn't sweet anymore, it's sour, which is why it's called sour mash whiskey. Some of it will be used to start the next fermentation, whilst the spent grain will go to beef up the local cattle. The liquid that's left isn't whiskey, it's what they call distiller's beer. To turn this weak beer into strong whiskey, they have to separate the alcohol from the water. 
The process starts by heating the beer to just below boiling point. Then it goes into a copper still. When it reaches 78 degrees, the alcohol starts to evaporate. The water won't boil until the temperature reaches 100 degrees. The alcohol vapour rises to the top of the still, from where it's tapped off into a pipe, where it cools and condenses back into this clear liquid. The end result is a liquid that's 67.5% pure alcohol. It's what they call green whisky, and green whisky tastes awful. The solution is to filter it, and for that, they need charcoal. But to get this whisky's unique taste, they can't use any old charcoal. They use exactly the same kind the company would have used 150 years ago. The wood is from the sugar maple tree, the same tree maple syrup comes from. Cut down in the fall, when the sap content is at its lowest, the trunks are sawn into two-metre-long battens and left for 12 months to air dry in the rickyard. To turn this wood into charcoal, they have to set fire to it. But spraying it with paraffin or petrol could taint your tipple. Luckily, they've got a constant supply of something flammable and tasty, raw whisky. Once the whisky is lit, the dry wood soon starts to burn. But it can't be left too long, otherwise it would simply turn into ash. So, after a couple of hours, the charcoal burners hose down the rick with some more of the local spring water. Once it's cooled, it's piled up, ready to be sent to the filtration vats. The green whisky is poured on top and left to slowly filter through. It takes up to 10 days to seep through all that charcoal, and when it comes out, it has a smooth and slightly smoky taste. But the filtered whisky is still clear and lacks some of its trademark flavour. The answer lies in these new American oak barrels. The inside of each barrel is charred to caramelise the natural sugars of the wood, which will react with the alcohol and add colour and aroma to the whisky. They fill nearly 500 barrels an hour, with each one holding over 200 litres of whisky. After the barrels are filled and stoppered, they're rolled onto trucks to be taken to the barrel house. The barrel house holds three layers of barrels on each floor. The largest barrel house is seven storeys tall. That's space for 20,000 barrels of whisky. And this is just one of 74 barrel houses. That's an awful lot of sipping. Under American law, all whisky has to be aged for at least two years. But just to be sure, here they give it a minimum of four years. The whisky in this barrel house has had its four years. It should be ready. But nothing gets bottled until it's had the nod from Jeff. He comes to check the barrels armed with a bottle, a glass and an old-fashioned hand drill. What I look for, and especially a, a very mature whiskey, is a, is a brownish hue or an amber color that almost approaches a red. Pretty much ready for the bottle. I'm very, very pleased with what I'm seeing in it. Most bottles are a blend of different barrels, but this barrel's destined to be bottled a stronger single-barrel whiskey. After all the time and care that's gone into making it, they can't afford to waste a drop. So first the bottles are checked for imperfections. Then they're sent to be washed. Finally, the single barrel whiskey is mixed with a little spring water to bring its strength down from a slightly scorching 59% alcohol to 
to a smoother 47%, and the bottles are filled. From grain to glass, it's taken over four years, but at last it's ready for delivery to tipplers all over the world. Almost everywhere except, of course, for here in Moore County, where the sale of alcohol is banned. Sorry, guys.